Hi, this is Daniela Cambone and welcome back to StansberryInvestor.com. Last year, when most investors were watching their stocks plummet, one Wall Street legend had an unfair advantage that was identifying winning stocks with massive upside, like Riot Blockchain before it shot up 10,000%, Digital Turbine before it shot up 789% in Overstock before it shot up over 1,000%. This power gauge comes from the legendary Mark Chaikin. And right now you can get a free in-depth look at how his power gauge system works. A way to type in any of the 4,000 different tickers and see exactly where the stock is most likely to go next and in any type of market. Simply go to powergagetrial.com for your free look. Again, that's powergagetrial.com for your free look. All right, let's get to our segment today. Hi, this is Daniela Camboni and welcome back to StansberryResearch.com. We are talking inflation today, which plowed ahead at its fastest 12 month pace in nearly 40 years during December. This is according to the latest uh, stats from the Labor Department. But do we buy the numbers? Is there truth in what they're telling us? Joining us back is Todd Baba Horowitz of BabaTrading.com. Baba, always good to see you. Happy New Year, my friend. Daniela, it's always good to be with you and happy new year to you as well. Uh, and uh, the numbers are garbage. They're BS. <laughs> okay. If you take a multiplier like three, that would be the right number, about 20% inflation right now. The 7% is as much a crock that you could ever get in this industry. And of course, they exclude food and energy. But what, what is the number one expense for most people? Food, food and energy. energy. And, and with the energy policy, Crude oil is going to continue to rock and probably go back well over 100. I would not be surprised to see it make a run at its all-time high once again. Because, again, when you have a lousy energy policy, you're going to get high inflation. And then you've got a Federal Reserve that is clueless, that was is about five years behind raising rates. Five years behind raising rates. We're going to talk about that in a second. Um, but our, the friend of our, a friend of our show, uh, Frank Justra, who who you also know, Bob, actually wrote a very timely article um, questioning whether the U.S. is purposely underreporting inflation. I want to get your thoughts on that. He says in the article, it's hard not to wonder when you look at how it's calculated. He brings up that over the past thirty years, the Labor Department has changed their method of calculations twenty times. And they do not disclose the raw data it uses for its formula. They don't well, disclose it. He could very well be right with, you know, again, I just always figured the government did not account. So it, I always thought the numbers were up because I went back and revised them later. But he could be very well right. I mean, again, there this this particular administration also has an agenda in play, which is to, to get some universal basic income. So they're trying to create numbers and, 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 and do things here, but certainly his article could be your spot on because they do play with numbers, right? Anytime the government numbers come out, you never know how real they are because you don't know where they're getting the data. And that goes along with the Federal Reserve as well, because of course they don't, they're using models that are as old as the Model T from 1913. So, so let's get to Jerome Powell's statement earlier this week where it almost seemed he was trying to cover all his bases saying, okay, you know, inflation is, a, is almost dangerous now, um, yet the economy is healthy, yet yeah. we need a higher interest rate environment. How do you decipher this? This economy is about as weak as you can get. It, this is like matchsticks and, and waiting for one match to light to blow it all up. This is as, as weak as we've been and as long as I can remember. You, you, you can't get a workforce going. You can't get the supply chain going. We had the, the second biggest trade deficit in history. And yet we have the solution right here. But we don't want to use the solution because we've got this, again, ridiculous green environment deal that they're trying to get done, which even if done, wouldn't be ready for 10 to 20 years to begin with. So why not stop the fracking, stop the shale producing, and let's have gas go to $5 a gallon and take money out of everybody's pocket because you know at certain prices you're 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 one thing and it's a percentage of your income but when you're on a low income budget gas becomes a huge part of your budget so this economy is in big trouble the markets are in big trouble and we're very weak right but, here but the markets are still not responding even to the CPI number coming out not responding 
They keep going higher, higher, higher. What's you know? How does this well, play out? They, for you? They're responding right now. They're they 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 have turned almost not dramatically, but they have turned lower after almost getting near highs. So, you know, again, remember the markets will react when they're ready. And you know, right now, I think you're seeing what you call distribution, and the strong hands are are slowly dumping off to the weak hands, the ones who didn't get in for the entire rally, who want to get in now on the dip. I think that's what you're seeing. And I would not be surprised if 2022 was the year of the big collapse and the replay of 2008. Wow. Okay. Let's go deeper on what you just said there, because, you know, if you've been watching my outlook, I've had many experts come on saying that 2022 will be the year of disaster, the greatest correction. Now, it's interesting coming from you because you've been a trader on the floor, uh, you know, for a really long time here. What's what's really concerning you in the movements that you're seeing that you really think this is the year that we could have a major correction and by major what what do you mean by that what kind of percentage are I mean, you mean major is 50 50 55 percent i mean wow. you know i mean it won't it won't go right there i mean listen there'll be plenty of opportunity for people to exit when it happens but when it's all done this is going to be as ugly as is always but the question is this bubba why would the fed let go now they've worked so hard to keep that market afloat for so long uh is it because they're backed into the corner because why would they want to go down that road because they have no idea of what a real economy is because they have no idea of logic or common sense when it comes to running a market. This is the same reason that they're five years behind in trying to hike rates. This market has been going up for almost 12 years straight and they kept finding excuses to, to create new money and, and put the o o oversupply the money, which then where's it gonna go? If you have a big money supply, the wealthy are gonna continue to load up in the stock market it doesn't help the average person on the street. This big rally didn't help the average guy other than their 401k, but they didn't benefit like the people who have money because you could see what was happening, but you couldn't do anything about it. And this is what we have the problem. Are you also suggesting that even if, you know, they're saying they're going to be super aggressive with their taper now that you can't be aggressive enough because they've got five years of catching up to do? Yeah. Uh, th listen, rates we have, I will, I will bet you, and I, I bet banks don't have, could not pass a real stress test. You know, we don't get to see those numbers either. And they continue to tell us that banks pass the stress test. I would venture to say BS to that as well. I would say probably 50% of the banks couldn't because they changed the fractional banking laws for a while. And instead of being able to lend 10 to one, which is a joke in its own part, because you're creating new money, but they gave them no limit lend, 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 get that money out there, get this economy flowing. Well, eventually the spending has got to stop. Listen, you have consumer credit at the highest of all time. Now, part of that's because of the size of the numbers, but generally revolving credit, credit cards are at record highs right now. So what do you think can happen from here? Baba, a final point here, uh, sectors that you're, you're liking. Uh, I mean, you've liked gold and silver for the longest time. Are you doubling down now? Yeah, I love gold and silver. I mean, listen, full disclosure, as we speak at this very moment, I'm short gold and silver on paper, but I still buy physical on a regular basis. I will always be an accumulator and I will trade what is the trend. Now, it looks to me like the short term trend or the medium term trend is going to change here today anyways. So most likely I'll be long tomorrow if we stay up on the day. But right now in paper gold, I'm short, but in physical gold, I'm always buying that because I think it's the spot to buy. What's the strategy there? Why are you shorting the paper? Well, because I use an algorithm that, that says that the trend is down. So I'm trading the overall trend. So paper right now is, is a short. Now, again, I would, I would say to you that if the market closes higher today, more than likely it'll trigger a buy signal. I'll have to get long just above 1820, which is what the number I've been watching anyways. Any feels on Bitcoin? Uh, lots of theories about how uh, the cryptocurrency will, will, will trade now. I love this. I love the cryptocurrencies. I'm kind of disappointed I didn't get in early. Okay. But I think that, listen, I think that the cryptocurrency world is for real. I think that it's going to be, it's never going to replace gold and silver and, and real physical metals, but it's going to be another asset class, especially starting out with the libertarians and the very young people, because the, the youth, they understand it and they know how to play it. And the, the libertarians, it, where else can you go to have a non-manipulated uh, asset that can't be uh, disguised by your government, even though the Fed is supposed to be private. So, so are you taking advantage of the dips uh, we've yeah. had in Bitcoin? 
Okay. Yeah, I'm I'm a I'm a, an often buyer of you know Ethereum and, and Bitcoin, and I listen, I take a lot of gambles in, in some of the lower price ones that I think have a chance, you know. But I just for, so everybody knows, I would never touch anything that didn't have at least a ten billion dollar market cap. All right, uh, what, can you share any of the you know the besides Ethereum, the Bitcoin, any that you like? Yeah, well, I like I like I like Stellar Lumens, I like uh, Ajax, uh, Solana, Litecoin. You know, uh, that's around and all those. Um, Todd Baba Horowitz, as always, I appreciate you coming on. Thank you, Danny. It's always great to be with you. And uh, happy 2022. It's going to be a happy one. We're going to have a great time. I hope so. I hope so. And thank you all for watching. Be sure to keep uh, staying tuned to standsbyresearch.com for more of our outlook. In the meantime, don't forget to sign up for premier content at daniellacombone.com. That's it for me. Thanks for watching. Opinions expressed on this program are solely those of the contributor and do not necessarily reflect the opinions of Stansbury Research, its parent company, or affiliates.